awake, free, and ready community. Awaken your soul, free your mind, and get ready for what's next. History is written by the victor. History is filled with liars. If he lives, his truth becomes written, and ours is lost. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another Awake, Free, and Ready feature video. I'm honored that you're here. We ask that you pay it forward and like, share, and comment on the video. Your thoughts and feedback are appreciated. As well, hit that bell icon to be notified when we release another AFR video. And of course, hit the subscribe button if you have yet to do so. So today, it's all about the trees. Not just any trees. No, today we are going to look at the trees you've most likely never seen. Yet, they've been hiding in plain sight all your life. In fact, they've been around since the dawn of time as we know it. Unless you are a true nature buff, you most likely don't pay too much attention to the trees all around you until you're hiking in them or seeing them being clear cut on the news or seeing them burning as they push the global warming agenda. Today we are going to look at some of very special trees, some very big trees, no even bigger trees, no bigger than that too. Yes, the General Sherman tree in the Redwood Forest of California is the biggest living tree, weighing in at a colossal 2,472,000 pounds and a towering height of over 274 feet. But even it was not the biggest recorded. That honor goes to the General Noble, which rose to 285 feet. Sadly, it was logged in 1893. However, as large as these trees were, they are not even close to being in the same category of the giant trees we are about to explore today. But before we do, it is important that you get a lesson on the micro first. This way you get to see how wood behaves as it breaks down rots and returns to the earth. For that, we have to look at stumps. We have to look very closely at the way wood ages after it is cut or dies. You have to get familiar with the patterns, the shapes, and the formations wood creates in its state of decay. So strap in my friends as we are about to go from the micro to the macro in a big way. From this size of a tree to the titans of trees. Yes, that's Devil's Tower in Wyoming, USA. It is much more than a landmark in the movies. Yes, that one. No way! Scientists insist it is the result of a half a mile of erosion above that occurred over 50 million years, leaving this core of basalt. They tell you that the lava flowed and cooled to create these unique and incredibly large hexagonal columns. That's the lie they want you to believe, my friends. Have you seen any molten lava in your lifetime manage to make that happen? In fact, it can't. There's no way lava can possibly do that. It's too random, too disorganized as it seeks its own level and cools and hardens into shapes that are anything but uniform. It can't flow in perfectly straight lines and then magically become one of the most difficult shapes to pull off unless it is a living organism. There were no perfect forms of the lava to pour into. And erosion has never had the ability to craft thousands of hexagonal columns out of stone. 
Wood, on the other hand, is very different. It has so many fascinating attributes to its structure. As it breaks down, each layer exposes the next. And what do we have here? At its core are hexagonal fibrous structures to give it strength and support, allowing it to grow to tremendous heights. Look at this stump and you can see the columns being exposed as it breaks down. How the top has lost its form and uniformity, yet up close it resembles a cliff face or mountain. Once you see it, my friends, it is very hard to unsee it. Wow, look at this. Do you know what this means? The big difference was the ancient trees were silicon based versus the carbon-based plant life we have today. There are many varieties of granite faces on majestic mountains that just happen to look like the bark of a tree. Or shall I say, the bark of a tree or its interior can look an awful lot like granite or sedimentary striations. In fact, it is so eerily exact that it is as if nature has been telling us what's been hiding in plain sight for all of human history. No other comparison exists on earth like that of ancient stone and that of rotting wood. Remember, there's cell structure that exists in nature. It was just too big for us to see what was there all along. My friends, I invite you to rethink the science, that they may have been wrong about how our realm of existence took shape, and that the topography may not be nearly as old as they claim. What if, instead of tens of millions of years of sediment, deposit, and erosion, that there was a very different world just a few thousand years ago? A silica-based realm of reality that allowed for the growth of gigantic trees and organisms. Then, like everything, that era came to an end. A cataclysm took place that saw the giant trees fall or cut down, and once dead, the silica petrified into the stone we have today.
even the strangest stone shapes that are said to be the result of erosion patterns that defy logic now fantastically become glaringly obvious. I want to draw your attention to an amazing archaeological site. This is Mesa Verde in southern Colorado. This unique canyon was home to the Anazi tribe who built their home inside the cliffs of the canyon around 1100 BC. However, there's something very peculiar about the cliff face. Let's take a closer look. What does it look like with new eyes? Look again. Now here's something very interesting. Here's a topographical map of the area. Do the mountain seams not look like the large limbs of a tree? Does the area not look like the foliage of a giant tree? Look closely. Given what you can see from above, isn't it more plausible that this is a giant tree that was laid to rest in its place? Again, rotting wood and rock cliffs seem to have a lot of striking similarities. But perhaps you are still very skeptical and discounting this as pure magical thinking. Hey, I get it. I was once there too. But let's look closer at the striations of a canyon wall. We can clearly see the striations of millions of years of sedimentary buildup and erosion. I mean, there's no doubt. The rock was carved by wind, by rain, and the constant flow of a river that once flowed here. I mean, the rock layers and erosion patterns are right in front of your eyes. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. I should have told you. This is just a close-up of a petrified cedar tree dug up in the high desert. Now do you see it? Right here, right now, as we wake up from history, our majestic mountain peaks will forever begin to represent a completely different, yet spectacular sense of awe and wonder. I have goosebumps, people! Right here, right now, watching the world. All right, my friends, now I want to take you down to South America, to Venezuela, to the granddaddy of all stumps, and possibly the place of what was once the largest forest in all the realms of reality. We are told that these mesas, called tapuis, are a result of the hundreds of millions of years of erosion that swept all the surrounding land of the plateau away leaving these large outcroppings due to being of a more robust stone and harder to erode. Some of these tapuis rise up over a thousand meters above the jungle floor. It begs the question, 
where did the several trillion tons of erosion wind up? Just curious. Another very intriguing feature of the Tupui is the top. They are unique ecological areas of their own, untouched by the rest of the world. They are very inhospitable environments due to the harsh topography with these very strange and bizarre so-called erosion patterns. Only one other place looks similar. Yeah, you guessed it. Need to see that again? At what point does one let go of the paradigm and replace it with another? I don't believe it. It's not possible. I didn't say it would be easy, Neo. I just said it would be the truth. Stop! Let me out! Let me out! I want Do you really think granite is malleable like this? Or due to millions of years of tectonic pressure, it just bent and curved like this? A silica tree, on the other hand, would indeed be able to do just that. Driftwood and petrified wood are dead ringers of a microcosm that nature has been trying to share with us for a very long time. So you might be wondering, in the era of the great trees, what happened to them? How were they cut down? Where'd they go? There are a number of theories and ancient lore. One such story comes from the Bible itself in Ezekiel 31. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Because it towered on high, lifting its top above the thick foliage, and because it was proud of its height, I handed it over to the ruler of the nations, for him to deal with according to its wickedness. I cast it aside, and the most ruthless of foreign nations cut it down and left it. Its boughs fell on the mountains and in all the valleys. Its branches lay broken in all the ravines of the land. All the nations of the earth came out from under its shade and left it. All the birds of the air settled on the fallen tree, and all the beasts of the field were among its branches. Therefore no other trees by the waters are ever to tower proudly on high, lifting their tops above the thick foliage. No other trees so well watered are ever to reach such a height. They are all destined for death, for the earth below, among mortal men, with those who go down to the pit. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. On the day it was brought down to the grave, I covered the deep springs with mourning for it. I held back its streams, and its abundant waters were restrained. Because of it, I clothed Lebanon with gloom, and all the trees of the field withered away. I made the nations tremble at the sound of its fall when I brought it down to the grave with those who go down to the pit. Then all the trees of Eden, the choicest and best of Lebanon, all the trees that were well watered, were consoled in the earth below. Those who lived in its shade, its allies among the nations, had also gone down to the grave with it, joining those killed by the sword. 
which of the trees of Eden can be compared with you in splendor and majesty? Yet you too will be brought down with the trees of Eden to the earth below. You will lie among the uncircumcised with those killed by the sword. This is Pharaoh and all his hordes, declares the sovereign Lord. Nothing is as it seems, my friends. But the hills and the valleys are there and all around us as a gentle reminder that the great silica trees of the ancient world are gone, but their legacy is still very much a part of our realm. Imagine that our stolen and lost history once contained a wondrous and fantastical environment far beyond what our imagination can comprehend. Trees and life on a scale that only can be told in fairy tales and are the stuff of legends. What if it wasn't as long ago as we are told? Sadly, we are told the great lie to dumb us down and forget just how fantastical our history might have been. We truly are in a magical realm with all its awe and splendor. And perhaps with the time you spent watching this video, that you see your world as being even more magical and mysterious than ever before. What if we are connected to a history that makes us so much more than we can imagine. Thank you for watching my friends. Remember, you are here to awaken your soul, free your mind and get ready for what's next. Please like, share and comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback. And of course, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you soon. Much love, my friends. If what we perceive is often wrong, how can we ever know what's real and what isn't? Nothing is as it seems.